Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Sandy Bottom Homestead. And this is the time machine version. What does that mean? Um, I'm about to harvest my sweet potatoes and I was out messing with something. And I wanna show you something that is really just blatantly obvious and I can't believe I haven't caught it in all these years. And it has to do with this seminal pumpkin. I guess there is a blessing to having this crop take over my whole garden and yard this year. And it's something to learn that I'm gonna try and employ moving forward. And so this applies to squashes, tomatoes, melons, anything that vines in general. I think this is gonna be a really useful and very eye-opening thing for you to see. And it's a time machine because I haven't harvested my sweet potatoes yet, but by the time you see this video, you have seen the sweet potato harvest video. So there is that. But um, let me show you what I found and show you some examples of things that kind of triggered me to notice this. So here's my seminal pumpkin that's going over the trellis and back down. And you can look at the state of it. It's a little beat up. Some of the, this plant's really old. And then you've got this all over here. Look at it, it's just nice, it's healthy. It's putting on pumpkins. One, there's one over there, that's two three i think there's like one or two in there and i was moving some vines around because i need to get into the sweet potato bed to trim it up um, or not to trim it up but to pull the sweet potatoes and, get, and harvest them and i just was not wanting to i want to try and save as much as possible because this is a really big crop for us for winter grabbing the uh the vines and just gently moving them out of the way nothing crazy you know trying to avoid cutting them and what i'm trying to do and what my goal was this year and they just kind of went crazy was to have them grow up and over and then come down like this and you can see where i've laid a couple vines out so last year they grew all the way down we're going to try and do the same thing and i was under the impression that this vine was reaching for light um, you know that's what plants do they grow for light then I found this. So we're just gonna move this vine, pull it up and look at that. You see that? Where it lays on the ground, it roots. And some of you are probably like, yeah, dummy, you didn't know that? Well, I did and now it's all wrapped up. I can't really get it, but <clears throat> you can see everywhere there's a leaf, there's a root, okay? And so that now explains to me why this plant is getting as large as it is. That's not the only example. Let me show you something else, which is crazy. And this shows you, this will tell you how little I care about this plant just because it is so, so stinking big. Not but so much you can do. And um, I, you can see if I mow back here, I just run right over it, but it continues to grow. Right here, look at this. You can see the vine has been mowed, it's ripped apart. And now look, look at it, it just goes all the way down and out here. But more importantly, this is how I get in my shed. This is my stair. I just step on it consistently. Don't even care. I just crush it, whatever. That's a male flower, it doesn't matter. And um, it continues to grow. So if we come down the line, right there, it's rooted into the ground. And so it's feeding this plant and the growth of this amazing plant in which, look at that, there's a pumpkin right there. I didn't even know there was gonna be a pumpkin. It just tells me a lot, a lot, lot. And I'm really glad that I let this plant do what it did this year because it was eye-opening experience. And I did notice it this year earlier to an extent when I was cleaning out this area of the bed, cause you know, where I am right now, I couldn't stand right here at all. So I moved, I just kind of pulled it up and then draped it over here. Just getting it out of the way, gonna let it do its thing. And when I did, I noticed the roots then, but I didn't think much about it. You can see they're dried up now. I didn't think much about it. I thought maybe it was just a one-off or something. You know, not a big, huge deal, but this is how these plants thrive. And it makes sense that it's growing this way because it's not looking for light. What it's looking for is moisture. And so as we water with these beds, these in-ground beds, and the water 
kind of leaches back into the soil, they are feeding off of that and the nutrients that are coming out back into that soil. Now, I've seen this with sweet potatoes and hopefully you've seen in the sweet potato, which I'm gonna keep my mouth shut when I'm doing it so I don't spoil this video. Yeah, right, you know I'm gonna say something. But I've seen the roots come out of the different nodes on it, so that's definitely a possibility. We know that tomatoes do the same thing where if you, know, you, you bury them deep, they create roots. So we know that if you had a sweet a potato, a, dang, a tomato that we didn't trellis, and let's just say we covered it up intermittently, you would just continue to get this long vine of tomato, which could be a really, really good thing. So I wanna come over here to what's left of the wild garden. You can see all of our buckwheat is sprouted and we've got some winter mixed peas and stuff like that. Uh, just cover crops intermingled in. It's all germinating, but we've got a, uh, a cantaloupe back here, which is just struggling because of the amount of light it gets. I'm not, you know, not expecting a harvest, but I haven't even looked at this. I wanna see, oh boy, look at that spider web. Let's take care of that bad boy real quick. I hate when I'm walking in the woods and I get a spider web in my mouth, hate it. And the spiders that go on there, them big ass writing spiders, good night. So we've got this little pitiful, I believe it's a cantaloupe, struggling. I haven't cared for this bed at all this year, don't really care to start. But I just wanna see if I get any resistance when I pull up on this vine at all. Yep, there is resistance. So right here, there's a root. Yep, so this vine is producing as well roots into the ground. It's an interesting concept. Um, I, you know, am I suggesting that you start not trellising your tomatoes or putting them in cages and growing them on the ground? Absolutely not. That's not even what I'm beginning to suggest, but what I'm suggesting is if you have something go crazy, let it grow, see what happens, see what you can produce out of it and see what the plant does. Because, you know, a lot of these plants, even though they're different, you know, melons, cucumbers, um, beans, more probably beans, anything that vines, they're, they're different plants, but they have similar characteristics and what they like to do. And I think we can learn a lot from them. So what is my plan as of now? I have 60 days until my first frost. I could probably get, at the rate these plants are going, 10, 15 more pumpkins off of them. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna move these vines. I got one, two, three, four total right here. And this right here, this trellis does not get a lot of sunlight. Um, my black eyed peas have really struggled this year and it's now this is, this is the last year for this cattle panel here. It's just, it doesn't do good. So we're gonna move it, but you see we have these here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take these plants, drape them over and let them do their thing going down because take, I'll just give you a little peek at, uh, we're getting into the honey flow. So the bees are very active, but this just, again, will just kind of prove the point. That one plant comes down over and is growing right into the bee yard. And we're not gonna really mess with it at all. It's getting its sun, it does its thing. I mean, dang, there's a pumpkin right there. I'm not gonna go get it right now, but there's a pumpkin right there too. This is a big part of this, and I think this is a good learning experience for me and you. And uh, this is my second year growing Seminole pumpkins, and they just get so big. And last year, that one vine got like 30, 40 feet long. Now I know why. I've had uh, butternut, butternut squash do that too. We didn't grow any this year, but that's gonna change next year. We, take, we do it every other year. And uh, we're gonna add that in next year. And it's the same thing. We're just gonna let it grow on the ground and let it kind of do its thing. Obviously it's putting roots in it and it's gonna survive. And um, we're gonna make it work. So I hope you found this useful and you can apply it in your garden to some crops and just maybe test a couple things out see what you like but uh it's very interesting to me and i was shocked to see those nice fresh roots feeding this big giant plant Good.